Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on the channel. I'm Adam and this is a exclusive video to the archive channel I guess so, because um, this video is not going to be uploaded on my channel, it's just going to be on the archive channel. Uh, so yeah, this is just ranking the episodes from season 2 of the original series of Ben 10 from worst to best. Like with the last ranking there were 13 episodes, this one has 13. <laughs> Uh, let's get into it. Please bear in mind, this is my opinion, so if your opinion is different, please in the comments below what your favourite episode from Season 2 is. Most likely going to be the same as mine, as it's obviously the best. Um, what I will say is, though, uh, I have not seen Lucas's rankings, even though they've been up there for a few days now, and I still haven't seen them. Oops. Um, so I don't know what his favourites are. I, I He told me multiple times, so I know what his favourite episode is, but I don't know the order in which he'll rank them. I have a good guess on what his favourite uh, villain is, and the side character is probably going to be the same as mine. I mean, one-off character is probably going to be the same as mine. Anyway, let's get into it. So, 13th place, starting off the list, is Galactic and Forces. Me and Lucas both agreed that this is a terrible episode because compared to the others, um, it's completely and utterly boring. Uh, nothing interesting happens. Uh, we get introduced to the Galactic Enforcers, uh, Ultimos, Tiny and Synaptac. Um, however, they're not really good. Like, well, they are good, but I don't really find them intriguing to watch. And uh, I I just fall asleep if I, I every time I see this episode I fall asleep watching it so um, it's a way to go to bed so yeah uh, but other than that nothing interesting happens six six comes back that's it not a good episode six six in personally uh, hunted is the best one with six six but that's all I can say about it moving on to twelfth place we have the big tick. Now, like with um, Galactic Enforcers, the Big Tick is also one easily the worst ep one of the worst episodes of season two, because even though it introduces Cannonbolt, which is the only good thing, nothing else in interesting happens in it. Uh, what the best thing that can possibly happen in it, uh, apart from having the new alien introduced, is having the new alien beat. The tick, like that, having Cannonball be the only alien to beat the tick, that's a bit of a convenience, isn't it? Even though technically Cannonball isn't the only alien that can beat um, the tick, it is the only it is one of the aliens that can beat it. Just so happens to be unlocked at the same time this tick comes down. And I'm saying it's not the only one that can beat it because way big Alien X, they can easily beat it. And from what I heard, Atomics can beat it as well. So, yeah. Um, 11th place, we have the Ultimate Weapon. Now, this one should come to no surprise as Lucas because I said this multiple times while I was watching it with him. I don't like this episode because of how neglectful Max is to Ben and Gwen. Um, and... It just felt kind of boring to me. It had this Indiana Jones theme here, but since I haven't watched it, I didn't really feel that kind of connection. And it just felt like this random episode with random plot, storyline and all that sat in between two rather good episodes. And it just didn't really fit in that well, in my opinion. Tenth place, we have the last of these episodes, which I do not like which is Gwen 10. Now, this one to some fans is actually a good episode because it shows of what could have been. I don't like it because it's more out of place than the ultimate weapon is. The ultimate weapon at least happened in the same universe kind of thing that um, the other episode of season two is. Gwen 10, before we know a different universe or something, I, I don't even know why. I don't even know how, it's never really fully explained of how Ben knows about the Omnitrix but doesn't have it. It's just going back to episode 1, 
a bit worse and it's just it's just confusing because how does it how does how does Ben know about the Omnitrix when back in episode one he knew nothing about it? It just didn't make much sense to me, so I just um just just um cut it out of the whole series initially. I don't know. I don't I won't really count it as a canon episode to the series it well to the um whole timeline that the this series takes place in. <clears throat> Gwenton's just like a different timeline on its own. Ninth place is They Lurk Below. Now, I need to say, They Lurk Below was a good episode to me. I liked it because it had something different, didn't have a returning villain, even though returning villain, villains are a lot greater. Um, these, the villains that were in here were these Robo Squiddies, uh, I call them Robo Squiddies, they're Robo Squids. Um, Kind of like Cephalox from Sequest. <coughs> God's sake. Um, but it's clear they're one-off villains because they all uh, exploded along with a hotel that was underwater. Um, I think this episode's only here, kind of like the Kraken, just to show Rip Jaws having a moment to shine, which is something which um, I'm happy about because Rip Jaws finally gets some spotlight attention to him. Eighth place, we have Tough Luck. Now, Tough Luck to me is a better version of uh, Lucky Girl. Um, it's the second and last uh, episode with Lucky Girl in it. Um, and having the same villain being Hex along with Charmcaster, I think is a solid add-on. Plus, the Keystone of Bazel being able to recreate the keystones of Bazel. Um, a bit convenient, but um, other than that, it's actually an alright episode. Uh, not because um, Lucky Girl isn't as uh, prominent is in it as uh, she was in the last one, but um, I would say it's just that it didn't really feel boring to me. The other, that uh, Lucky Girl did but tough luck I kind of enjoyed I would rewatch it again just not willingly I guess I don't know uh seventh place we have Dr. Animo and the Mutant Boy Ray Ray Dr. Animo and the Mutant Ray um basically apparently this is the best episode of Dr. Animo in I disagree Personally, I think the best episode of Dr. Animo in is, I'm tempted to say Divided We Stand, or the Negative 10 episode, because both of them I like a lot, um, and if I don't count those, the only other episode in the original series is Washington BC, and that's it. Uh, and I refuse to accept the fact that this is apparently his best episode because it's not. I hate this ep. I hated this episode because of these crossover of aliens. I get it's like side effects with something new added on to the formula to make it seem different, but the way it was executed with these alien fusions, I'm not a fan of. Especially Rip Jaws and Heat Blast. So that one I was not a fan of. It was completely useless. Moving on, sixth place we have Truth. Now this is the starting episode to series two and it's a good starting episode. It um, continues on from series one very well. Uh, like what the title says, it's just um, Max being honest with Ben and Gwen about his past as a plumber and all that. Uh, and we get introduced to his old partner, Phil, who turns out to be a bad guy, releasing aliens from the Norvoid projector, which comes back later in the series. Very much later in the series. Um, and, yeah, just just that. It was like a rather simple episode, but I kind of liked it. Um, nothing else interesting, just the fact that Phil was there. Even though he, he's a human villain, I thought he was a kind of good one. And no boy projector would would be proven to be a rather important item later on in that, that series. 
Anyway, fifth place we have Camp Fear. Now this one, I don't, can't really explain why, because I got the impression when watching it with Lucas that he didn't really enjoy it as much as I did. But I think it's the fact that I liked the little atmosphere that was set around this campsite of having this strange figure or figures living in a forest and then just have it about fungi. That was a bit strange, I will I will admit that, but it didn't really change the fact I still liked it. All the aliens that were in there got a moment to shine, especially Wild, Wild Vine, obviously. And Accelerate as well. I'm not being biased, I swear, but Accelerate, come on. Cannonball saving Gilbert from this death from falling down the cliff, and Stinkfly finishing up the job that Wild Vine had. Um, that Wild Vine did, I meant. But yeah, it was actually quite good. I still like, I still like Camp Fear. It had this whole creepy setting then that whole music that plays every now and then it just um makes you feel oh what's coming up next it's a great episode in my opinion and um even though i don't want to see a return of these villains because well you're probably not um i'm happy with where the way they with the mark they left in there they're not the best villains but they're not the worst uh fourth place we have hmm, now now, these last four episodes, all four of them are amazing. Like, I can't argue that. But I gave fourth place to this episode in particular because of a certain character that appears in it, which, as we'll find out in a future video, that I do not like. Uh, so fourth place is Ghost Freaks Out. Now, I was struggling to put Grudge Match or Ghost Freaks Out in fourth place because all the, the episodes are great but one kind of falls down due to the circumstances and one falls down due to a character but um i gave ghost freaked out fourth place because it had this eerie atmosphere which i liked and bought in bought a new villain which was actually ben's alien one of ben's aliens um Basically a ghostly alien going rogue and all that. Um, it was brought back in Alien Force with um, Big Chill going rogue. Um, which I thought was a nice link to it. And even though I definitely prefer Big Chill over Ghost Freak. I need to say I think Ghost Freak's rogue episode was maybe better. By a smidge though. There was a certain aspect in it in Big Chill's rogue episode which... When Lucas sees it, he'll know what it was, which may have drawn me back down. But it can't, I can't argue that that rogue episode in Big Chill was hilarious. Um, but yeah, with Ghost Freak's rogue episode, um, I was just watching it. Ghost Freak can possess people and the circus freaks, and also was um, what was his plan? Oh yes, to take all of the Omnitrix's DNA to become whole again. Um, okay. Okay, your little ecto neurite. Um, was it? I can't really say I learned anything from this episode because nothing of a lesson really happened there. What Lucas learned from that episode, though, is that apparently I can make a good ghost freak impression. Um, he told me not to do it though because it can hurt my throat. So sorry, you don't get to hear it. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I can't do it. But um. Yeah, I'm listening to Lucas for once. Uh, yeah. Ghost Freaked Out is actually a solid episode. Um, like I said, the eerie atmosphere, Ghost Freak going rogue, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The character I don't like, by the way, was the person giving Gwen, Ben and Max the tour of the, aca of the academy. Um, more on her later. But that is it about Ghost Freaks Out. Um, it just has the eerie atmosphere and introduces a good villain which you only see one more time afterwards. Third place is Grudge Match. Now this one I think was easy going to be third place compared to what the other episodes are. Because this one literally has Ben and Kevin getting abducted into a ship and then being forced to fight to survive. This is literally Pokemon. Without the trainers. <laughs> There's nothing else I can say about that really. Um, 
the only lesson that could have been taught to the people that watch that is the importance of teamwork and also that um what I learned, Lucas quotes a lot of lines from this from this episode, especially when he um, when something goes wrong, he blames another person for it, and when you ask why, he says this: "I don't know, it just is," which is something that Kevin says to Ben shortly after they got abducted, which um, yeah, <laughs> good reference. It does get annoying after a while, but yeah, it's good. Um, and then having the one-off character Technog. Um, basically being the better version of Volcanus, really. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to see Technorg again, because from what me and Lucas are presuming, Kevin killed him. That's that's all we can presume. Uh, second place is Framed. Now, this one was the bring back of Kevin, where we find out that Kevin can actually transform into Ben's aliens and wreak havoc on so many places. San Francisco was where this episode was in though. Um, that's it. Um, I would admit it was pretty good actually and kind of goes on with the whole framed thing of because Ben is presumably the only person that can have these alien powers and then we find out Kevin can actually do it as well. I was like, hmm, okay, okay, that, that is pretty good. Um, one thing I will add though, the one-off character, Lieutenant Steele, um, I, per I like him a lot, I really do, but I need to be honest, he was kind of a douchebag, kinda, he was, um, especially to Ben, um, but he was just doing his job, he, I mean, Kevin got away from him so many times, can't, didn't know that it was Ben, so... Yeah, obviously gonna be a bit annoyed with him. So yeah, I I can I can't blame him for doing that. But it doesn't change the fact that Tony Steel was still a great one-off character, and Framed is still a great bring back to Kevin in a great episode. But number one, obviously the best episode of this series, and the best episode easily so far throughout the entire original series, is Back with a Vengeance. Um, <laughs> the finale. Oh, Okay, I don't know why I kicked, but okay. Uh, the finale to season two of Ben 10, and um, the one where Ben finally gets access to the master control of the Omnitrix. When you're doing a tally of all the transformations in the original series, this episode can be someone's worst nightmare. It was. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell you. It was. Um, but... Aside from all that, it was a great episode with another unique add-on, which is actually a positive aspect. And um, it brought back the two most evil villains from the Ben 10 universe, being Vilgax and Kevin. Um, and then to think that they would actually form an alliance against each other just to kill Ben, or, well, get the Omnitrix and kill Ben... Um, I thought it was actually kind of good, and then to have that whole segment in the Null Void isn't really out of this world battle, it was. And then just to have, um, then to have that little bit at the end where Vilgax goes for the Omnitrix, but Kevin stays to take care of Ben, um, it really fits in their characters because Vilgax only wants the Omnitrix, saying he's a master to it, even though he hasn't really used it. That's the only problem I have with it. Vilgax is saying that only a true master can use this Omnitrix. So I was like, you never wore the Omnitrix. So what are you trying to say again? Yeah. And then Kevin going straight for Ben for some unknown reason, probably because um, Ben turned him into a monster. I don't even know how. He just made, enraged him and then Kevin transformed into that, <laughs> transformed into Kevin Eleven himself. Um, but I'm not going to argue with it. It's still a great episode overall. Uh, season 3 is next. Um, notable episodes that me and Lucas are both excited for in this series. Game over and Ben 10,000 easily. Personally, I'm looking forward to the two-parter with the whole purple lightning weather thing. Along with Ben Mummy. Uh, along with the um, farming episode with the mummy. And the Ben Wolf episode. That one, not as much, but still. Um, other episodes that are in that, I can't think of any really. Um, 
Alpha episodes from season three. Uh, the visitor, I guess, it introduces Zubchuck. But that's it. I can't think of any other episodes which I'm really looking forward to in season three. I think easily season two is one of the best, but um, season four is the most superior to me. Anyway, that's all for this time. If you like you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press that notification bell down in the corner below, and I'll see you next time with the villain ranking of season two villains. Peace out.